Well, it's Luke chapter 24 today as we finish up the Gospel of Luke. Luke is this guy, this Greek that had investigated Jesus. He's a doctor and really he's a journalist. He's excellent at it. Gathering all this evidence, gathering all this material to discover what Jesus was all about. And then he writes it to his friend, giving him a full documentary of the story of Jesus. And he finishes the Gospel of Luke in what we now refer to as chapter 24. He's going to go on and write the book of Acts as well. So he's got a whole nother scroll to write uh, for his friend Theophilus. But in this case, he finishes the main story of Jesus with the resurrection. Luke 24 verse 38 is the verse I picked out because it really encourages me in this day and age, knowing about what Jesus said to people on the day of resurrection. Jesus said to some people that day, he says, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your mind? He's gathered the disciples, they're in a room, he shows up and surprises them. And even that day, even hearing the story, even, even knowing what Jesus had told him over and over again, even discovering the tomb empty, even hearing the witness accounts from other people that still didn't do it, they still had doubts. And maybe you've had doubts, I know I've had doubts in my life, and maybe you've had them as well. And Jesus shows up, and he doesn't condemn them. He just questions them. Why are you troubled? Why do you have fear? Why are you worried? Why are you so scared? And why do doubts rise in your mind? What's the reason for your doubt? See, resurrection is the one day, the one event, the one thing about God that changes everything and gives us hope against our doubts. And resurrection, imagine if, imagine if resurrection never happened. Imagine what we would be like, what the world would be like, would it even exist? But where would we be if the resurrection had not happened? I wrote some things down, forgive me for reading this to you. I think it's important just to read what these thoughts were. Imagine life without a resurrection. Our hope for eternity would be in doubt. Like that's, we would all have doubt, big doubt about whether we had an eternity left. The only way to heaven would be trying to determine what was good enough. Did we obey the law well? Did we do what God said to do enough? Does, do we have any hope that there is that we've done anything well enough to earn a, a resurrection after death? Or our spiritual efforts would be about religious activities. I mean, the way you would know you were good is by how religious you acted. Forgiveness would be minimized, if you're looking at the Old Testament, retribution would be maximized. You think it's bad now. Can you imagine eye for an eye after thousands of years of no resurrection? Without a resurrection, the fruit of the Spirit would lose their luster. We, that wouldn't even be a goal. Who would care for a patient? Who would be kind to an enemy? Who, who would demonstrate selflessness in this world if there was no resurrection? You know, selfishness would be the standard of living, to live for ourselves, because tomorrow we die. Without any belief in a resurrection, we would be lost forever. Might as well live it up, because this is all we get. But we know, because Jesus showed us, and he did it, and then he demonstrated it afterwards, that there is a resurrection. And the resurrection is what gives us hope. It calls us to live differently. It reminds us we have an eternity. It, it allows us to forgive and know that we are forgiven. <laughs> Everything changed because of resurrection. And Jesus shows up that day just to say it over and over again to us. Why are you afraid? Why do you have doubts? I've done it for you. The event has happened. You have an eternity now. <laughs> so don't be afraid. And maybe Jesus needs to show up in your life. Maybe not physically, but maybe as we finish up the gospel of Luke, maybe the whole premise of this gospel for you is to have Jesus show up in your life personally. And he's ready to do it. He's done it over and over for thousands of years now. And he's ready to make his presence known to you. And the way you accept that is a simple prayer and a simple action. Peter said, it's really simple. Just repent, turn back to him, and be baptized. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you'll discover the resurrection does change everything for you. 
and takes away your doubts as well. God bless you as you do. We'll get to start the Gospel of John tomorrow. Looking forward to that. See you then.